Okay. I think we're holding up the Mishnah on Pei Zion. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, let me mute. Um, okay. We thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. And then the specific learning of Shabbat Pesach and Mishnah. So it's like this. Shir Mikta Saget. Correct, right? This is where we're this is where we're holding. Yeah? Okay. So over here we're talking about there's in this submission that we are going to have eight different cases of problems or not problems, but to get. Case number one is that he starts writing the get in one column and he finishes it in a second column. So she uh, means a um, like a board or a column. So, so that um, that literally means a leaf, like a block. A block means a leaf. So that's why uh, when we call a, a daf gemara, we call it a um, two sides of the daf. That would be the page of the gemara, and then amad is the column. But uh, over here, the expression as a daf means column. Well, um, what's the din over here? We started writing the get. We finished it on the second column, and the witness is signed on the second column, right underneath where it ends. So kosher, that's, that's going to be kosher. The Gemara is going to discuss maybe the top of the, the second column was the whole get. And the end of the first column uh, was went the other way, and you cut it off at both ends. You made it match perfectly, but really each one was didn't match. The Gemara is going to discuss all of the possibilities. Second case. Let's say the witness is signed on the top, or and they signed on the side, or they signed on the back of the paper. And the, the Mishnah says the get pasha tassel. If it's a regular get as opposed to a get makusha, where if you remember, a get makusha was the Kohen's get where they had to fold it and sign on the back. But if it would just be a regular get, then that would be puzzle. All of these cases puzzle. It's not, you didn't sign directly underneath the, 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 the form of the get. Kikif. What this would mean is that you started writing the get from the center of the paper. You started writing down. You started writing a get on the in, at the center of the paper, also writing up. So, it, so you have two get in coming out of the center of the paper, one going up and one going down. And the witnesses are signed in the, min, in the middle at the head of both of them. So this, the Mishnah says, both is puzzle. No one signs at the top of the. Uh, of, this has uh, signatures at the top of both kitten, which means in the center in this case. We're up to case number four. Let's say you did it exactly the opposite. You started at both ends of the paper, writing a get for this one and writing a get for that one. And then at the center, this is signature. So that's going to match with one of those kitten. So the rule is, well, you're signing um, the, the, um, the signature is going to be, is going to be uh, matching to only one of the gitin because one of the, one of the gitin is going to be upside down. So the one that it's matching to, it's, which means it's, it's standing straight up, it's matching the flow of the, uh, of the document, that's going to be kosher. Here, you just have two gitten, one on top of another. You start writing, writing down the page again, and then you continue writing another get as it gets lower. And in the center, in the middle of both gitten, you sign. So obviously the one that you signed together with, which was the first get, that's going to be the kosher get, and the bottom one doesn't have signatures, even though it's signed on the top of it. But. That's not considered a signature of a get. Get checks of a Ivris Veda of Yavanis. Or Yavanis Veda of Ivris. The get that was written in Hebrew, 
but the uh, witnesses signed in Greek, or it was written in Greek and the witnesses signed in Hebrew. This Kamaria had um, Friday quoted because over there there was a discussion about how they wrote their names. Did they write Yosef ben Shimon? That means the one that's signing is Yosef. Or would it be Yosef ben Shimon, his son is Shimon, and Shimon's not the father? That was a discussion on Friday. But here, uh, it's just talking about that it's uh, if you're allowed to sign in Greek. One of them signed in Hebrew, one signed in Greek. Let's say you have the handwriting of the cipher plus another aid. That's kosher. We'll see. We had a machlekes about this. What Ksav cipher meant. Ksav cipher, did it mean just the handwriting or did it mean a signature as well? We'll see in the Gemara. Ishplaini aid. If he doesn't say his father's name, he just says, so-and-so is the witness. Kosher, that's good. Then Ishplaini aid. Let's say he says the son of so-and-so is the witness. That's a signature. That's also kosher. Ish plainy, benish plainy, let's say it doesn't say aid, doesn't say the word witness after this. That's kasha. That's how they would sign the um das, pure-minded people. It means the, the sincere people of Yerushalayim. They wouldn't write aid. They would just write plainy ben plainy. Let's say he writes a nickname for himself and a nickname for her. That's kasha. Doesn't have to, if he if he if he didn't use the actual name. Now, um, Rashi says it means the family name, like they call you in school. You know, and they say Smith. So, um, so that that would also work. Okay, let's see the Gemara. Gemara starts off. We had a problem. We, we had a, a case with uh, a get that was written on two columns. says, It was written on two columns. We said that it's kosher if the signatures come in the second column. One second. Let's say that it's really two gitin. Over here, the expression for the for the um, for the the whole text of the get, they're calling it the zman. The um, the, the, they're calling it the time of the get, but they really mean the entire get. Why don't we suspect that maybe these were two separate get in and two columns, and the entire get of the second column was totally cut off. In 770, Gavaldic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the back, I'm in the back. It's not that. It's beautiful. Okay, I'm running to the airport now, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Good morning. So, um, the Shramli is man the Kama Vedim the Basra. The Gaza is man the Basra Vedim the Kama. What happened was the first get, they wrote down the, they, 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 they wrote the entire get. And the bottom of the page, there, there could have been signatures, but they cut it off. Second column that was uh, was started much higher, and they wrote a whole get. And at the signatures, they cut it off, which means that the that the get on the, the first column had a different set of signatures. The get of the second column, uh, they cut it off exactly that it matched the 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 get of on the first the first column, but really it was two separate gets. And the problem is is that maybe. There were conditions in the get and the things that we're making it look like it's all one get with signatures. And really it was snipped off at the bottom of the first get, snipped off at the, 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 the bottom of the second get, which is the top of the first get. And it makes it look like it, you read it down. Oh, you have a picture there. Um, Yeah, something like that. Okay. You see that picture that they're uh, holding up? Okay. So that's a concern. 
That would only be a concern if it was cut exactly at the bottom line of the get. And so we don't know that maybe it was cut off. But what we're saying now, Rav Abba says in the name of Rav, is that there was an empty space on the bottom. There's a whole long margin on the bottom, a whole empty space. So you see that it wasn't cut. It's not like there was, this was the end of the get. Well, the Gemara says, Vidilma is not man the guys, but you're only resolving the first get that that doesn't have a separate set of signatures. But what about the second get? We think it's the second get, we're referring to the second column. Let's say the second column really had a whole get above it and it was just cut off. The Gemara says, well, we can resolve that as well. Just like Rabbi it said the name of Rav, that it wasn't cut on the bottom of the first column. There was a whole margin on the bottom of the first column. We're on top of Pechas and Meralah. Kishyesh Ravach Mel If Rabbi says the name of Rav, that we're talking about that the paper of the get was continuing down with that empty space on the bottom. So also on the first get, on the, on the, I'm sorry, on the top of the, of the get, also you had empty space on the top. Okay, now for some reason the Gemara thinks that if there's a big empty space, then maybe um, it was written and then he changed his mind and he wrote the rest later. Maybe he switched his mind in the middle. What's the problem with that? Um, if he was Mavatal, the, the get, the main writing of the get, and then later on he got into another fight with her, he decided to divorce her and to reuse that, uh, that get. But really it was already Bathal. Um, the Gemara is going to have another problem. Uh, well, Rashi quotes another issue that maybe it was, um, it was written on one day and signed on another day. The Gemara answers the Kasa of Harayat Malmata Umuteras Malmaila. Because it, the, the switch of columns from the first column to the second column is mid sentence. So we don't think that he changed his mind in the middle or that was a delay. If it would have been a totally different sentence, then maybe, or just the signatures or something like that, then that would have been, that would have been uh, the, the, uh, the possibility that maybe there was a delay and it was written by day and signed by night or, or another day. But because it's mid-sentence, we're not concerned about that. Uh, maybe, why aren't you concerned about that? Maybe he actually, in mid-sentence, he uh, took a look at her and he said, uh, you know what, I think I'm gonna keep her. And then later on, he gets into a fight and he finishes off and he writes the, uh, the rest of it, which is, uh, which is, he started saying, and then um, he changed his mind, or he put, puts it on hold. And then uh, later on, he says, The Gemara says, well, that's a, a, a far-fetched concern. We're not concerned about that, that that's actually what happened. Ravashi Amar, Ravashi says, You can see from the borders of the paper that this is exactly how the get was written. That um, that uh, the, the writing of the get was in was in a um, in a section of the paper that you're able to write on and out of it was was wasn't as processed. So you see here that there was nothing written above, nothing written below, and we didn't have a concern that maybe it was um, done on a separate day because there really was no space. You see, in, why did we have? The, this concern that maybe it was done on a different day was because there was a huge gap in, the, in between the first column and the second column. So, so we said, oh, there must have been a delay in time. He's, he started writing here, then he writes on the next column, the next time he picks up the pen. But over here, we're saying that there really was no a gap in the column. It was just a big border of the page. And that resolves that, that the question of maybe it was cut exactly on the spot, you know, spliced. Um, and then put together to make it look like you have a, uh, a whole get. That we're not concerned with. I, I once handled an old Sefer Torah. And what we think of as the margins 
around the salve on the on the doff. Right. On the back, it was all like suede. So oh. the middle where it was written was like normal, and the margins were a completely different texture and even color. Uh -huh. so it was easy. It reminded me of this, huh? Where did you see that uh, title like that? That was about six years ago. Someone uh, wanted it to be in the Orange Kodish in Aventura during uh, Tishrei. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Where was the Torah from? Where were that? Where were... I believe the story of that Torah was that somebody had purchased two Sifrei Torah that he found for sale in Japan. Uh -huh. That's all I know about it. But it was. It reminded me of this. You can easily tell what was supposed to be written no. on what was not. Right. Right. So they probably, they, they had the whole parchment. And the part that was written on, they probably sanded it down much finer to be able to write clear, you know, to... Uh, yeah, you know, something like that. Just, just the part that was being written. Oh, well, wow. Okay. Next, Gemara says, The witnesses signed on the top. Aini, is that really a problem? The Mishnah said that it's possible. But Rav Chasim and Atzad, Rav would sign on the side. The Gemara says, Chasim b'shigage klapik sad. You can't ask a question on that because over there we're talking about that the, the, the signature was, yes, it was on the side, but it wasn't facing the margin. It was facing the writing. So he, he, he wrote, and then he, he wrote out of the writing. He, wrote, he made a signature. It says, if that's the case, and it says in the Mishnah, that if you matched up, if you did, you started writing two Gittin, both of them in the middle of the page, one going down and one going up. And you signed in the middle. So we said they're both puzzle. Why is it puzzle? One of them is going to be uh, as if it's on the side. Which one is it? The signature is is uh, is facing can only be facing one direction. So which one is it facing? That would be the kosher one. The Gemara says Hasam Durami Lake Ibra. Over there, the signature wasn't facing any side. So it'd be like the letter I, the capital I. You know where you have a a line going down and a line on the bottom and a line on top. So you had the get written on the top, the get written on the bottom, both going like that. You know outwards. And the signature was a line not matching any of them, coming across a straight, a straight line, perpendicular line to both get them. Okay. Yeah, what the Gemara is doing here is the Gemara is limiting the case of the Mishnah that this would be the, what the case was referring to. Yahachi, that's the case. The Gemara, the, the Mishnah that made a contrast. If they're written both starting in the center and they're working, one's going up, one's going down. Or if, or if they're both being written, um, going straight down the column, again on the top and again on the bottom. So uh, the, in that case, it's gonna be kosher, the signature. This is one second. The E, uh, I'm sorry, I skipped the, the end of the mission. It says they Sadim Nikram Besaifai Kosher. The the get that the witnesses are read together with the end of the get is gonna be kosher, Vidrami Kivra. But if they signed in that perpendicular line, La Bahadi Haimikir, La Bahadi Haimikir, then you can't uh, you can't read it with any of the gitin. You see what the Gemara wants to do is it wants to make a single variable to show the contrast, and it doesn't want it to have different variables here, else you won't see what the difference is. So the, the single variable was that if the get was written starting from the center, going up and going down. And the other one is, the other get was written from the top, going down one get after another. And then the signing was in the center. But if you're gonna throw in over here also that there was a difference between how it was signed, one was signed uh, in a perpendicular line to the get in, and one was signed across, then you're not really telling me the difference. So the Gemara answers, Ella Rav, the Diski Havi Rav, when he signed on the side, he wasn't signing a get. He was signing a summons paper. He was, that was a summons to people, summoning people to court. It wasn't a get. a get. An actual get, Rav would sign directly underneath. Okay. Now it says, get shiksavai ivris. Sab seifu ve'ed kosher. 
to get the written in Hebrew, signed in Greek. And then the, the case of the Mishnah finished off that if the Sefer uh, wrote to get the handwriting of the scribe plus one witness, that's going to be kosher. We're going to consider the handwriting of the scribe as one of the signatures. Amr of Yermia, Rav Yermia says, it's not the handwriting of the scribe that we're going to consider the signatures, but actually, Chassam Seifer Shemino. We're talking about that the Seifer actually signed it, not that it was just his handwriting. And we, we made a problem with this. We wanted to say the Chidah, but anyway, so let's read another line. Amr Rav Chiz, the Hamani Rav Yaisi. Chizda says that this is the opinion of Rav Yaisi that holds Mili like Minster and Lashliach. We had a concern that maybe the husband had told witnesses to sign and told the cipher to write. And he told it to wit to a to a shliach. The shliach didn't want to make the cipher feel bad. And he tell he 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 switches from the instructions of the husband. He tells the cipher, don't worry, you can sign first. And so it turns out that we don't really have the signatures of the husband that the husband instructed. We have the signature of the of the cipher. Because the because of the good manners of the uh, of the shliach that they want to insult the the, the site. so we say that why over here is it kosher? Maybe that's really what happened, and the good manners of the shliach caused the get to be puzzled by him, him telling the cipher to sign instead of the proper witness. We said that we're following the Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Yaisi holds that the the instructions of who's going to sign. It was going to write needs to be given directly from the husband. You can't have a shliach doing that. Mealy, just words, cannot be given over by a shliach. If that's the case, then we don't have any concern that maybe the shliach is the one that changed the instructions of the cipher because, because the, 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 you can't use a shliach for this. It had to be directly from the, from the instructions of the, of, the, of the husband. Okay. Ahi ksubas chasanim. It was a ksuba uh, of, a, of a groom. Asi lekami de rabavo comes in front of rabavo. Av yadi le letufsa lachsim asiad bechad sada. They knew the um, the handwriting of the scribe, and they also knew the signatures of one of the of one of the um, witnesses, but they didn't know the other witness. Tava lachshura. Rabbi Bo wants to say that, well, that's good enough because it's Sav Seifer Ve'ed. I recognize the handwriting. I know who this is. I recognize one of the witnesses. Combined together is two witnesses. Amalei Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yirmiya tells Rabbi Bo, Chasam Seifer Shaninu. It's not the handwriting. It's the signature of the, of, the, of the scribe that would make the get kosher. Over here, it was a ksuba. But whatever the case is, you can't just use the handwriting. You have to use the signature. Okay. The, the, the woman signs on it? Tell me again. You were saying that the woman signed on it? No. The, no, the, the, um, the, uh, the, the, there was the hand, they recognized, they wanted to, to, to notarize this document. They wanted to validate it. Right, right, right. They recognized the signature, one of the witnesses, and they recognized the handwriting of the scribe. Uh -huh. They didn't okay. recognize the second signature. Gotcha. So Rabbi Bo thought that that would be enough. But Rabbi Yermia is the one that says that when the Mishnah says the handwriting of the scribe, it doesn't mean the handwriting of the document. It means the handwriting of the signature that, of the scribe. That if he signs, that's also good. Okay. He, it, he wrote, the, they wrote his nickname and her nickname. Kasha, that's going to be kosher in the get. None Rabbanan. So in a you can go back 10 generations to use a parent's name as a nickname. You know, they say uh, um, in Lubavitch, there's some large families. So they say like, um, uh, what's your last name? They say, oh, Shapiro. They say, uh, Nachman uh, label. You know, they, they use like the father's name to, to, to describe who, which, uh, which one it is. Anyway. So, um, so they say over here that you can go back up to 10 generations using parents' names as a description of who, who the person is. Well, uh, that's a machlaikis. Rav Shem Menelazra, I'm a shleisha there, Skasha. Shem says you can only go back three, three uh, generations to use the parents' name 
as a nickname for this person. We can't be elef, but if you go back further, puzzle. Okay. Three, three generations or 10 generations can you go back calling someone uh, by, by that nickname? Kaman Ozla Hadam Rab Khanina, according to whom does it go? This that Rabbi Khanina said, Rabbi Khanina is a first generation in Amira, student of Rabbi. He says, Kasav Khanicha Savis Pigitna Shleshid Dairus. That, that the nickname of a parent, uh, using a person's nickname, using a person's parent's name as his nickname. Who says that you can do that for three generations? According to whom? Come on. Rav Shem ben Alasa, that goes like Rav Shem ben Alasa. Okay. I'm Rav Ravuna. Ravuna says, Maikra, what's the support for this from a Pasuk? It says, banim banim The support is, it says, we give birth to sons and grandsons. You see? Three generations. I don't know what this has to do with the get. But, um, oh, the Neshantem. What does the Neshantem mean? And you'll be taken out, chased out, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was in last week's Parsha. It says that, um, that uh, you'll stay in the land for um, a few generations and then you're going to be chased out. Yeah, so which means only up until three generations is it considered um, is it considered a connector. After that, it's chased out. It means you can't use the earlier generations as a nickname. I'm Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Shua ben Levi steps in over here and says, "This is uh, Rabbi Shua ben Levi was an expert in Agadita. So it says, Eretz Yisrael was destroyed. That means when they came into the land, when were they exiled the first time? That's going to be after, actually, it's probably not the first exile, talking about the 10 tribes. When were the 10 tribes exiled? That was after seven, uh, it says courts, but what it really means is um, seven kings. They, 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 I think in, even in English, they use that, uh, they say the court as a, for a kingdom or something. I'm not sure, it sounds familiar. But um, who were the seven kings? The seven kings worshipped the idols. So those were Yeravim ben Nevat, who was a famous uh, person that he uh, inst instituted two idols, right? He had the people worship idols. This is in the north. This is the 10 tribes. Asha ben Achia, Achia, Achav ben Amri. Achav was also a uh, famous king, ruled for a long time, wicked king. Yehu ben Nimshi, Pekach ben, ben Ramalia. Menachem ben Gadi, Yishea ben Ela. Yishea ben Ela was, was uh, supposed to be a better king than the others. But anyway, it says, Shinemar, Umlala Yeledes Hashiva, that the woman that gave birth to seven is um, bereft. And Nafcha Nafsha, her spirit has fallen. Vashim Shabayd Yaimam, the sun set while it's still day. Usha Vechapera, she's ashamed and uh, Shame. I'm a Rabami. Rabami says, Micra, what's the source for this? That seven generations and then they're going to, to, be, chased, to be chased out or exiled. It says, Kisailid Banim Uvne Banim. And you're going to have sons and grandsons. So sons is two, grandsons is another two. And because it has three words there, that's a total of Banim Uvne Banim. That's a total of seven. Amalei Rav Kana and Rav Asi Rav. Rav Kana and Rav Asi are two students of Rav, and they ask Rav questions. They say like this. It says about Hesheh ben Elo, the last of the ones, the one that they were exiled uh, from, from his kingdom. It says, So the people did bad in the eyes of Hashem, but it wasn't like the other kings. It was better than the other kings. And it says, Allah Allah Shalmanesa, that Shalmanesa came in and exiled the people. Why was it uh, in his time when he was even a better king than the others? Amalahu, he said, that those uh, centuries, with an S, those um, uh, soldiers that were um, those guards that that Yeravim ben Nevat had stationed at the border between um, the 10 tribes and Yehuda, so that the people can't cross over to visit the base of Migdash. So he removed them. 
Go he say a bit one. He said took them away. Rafa piece lay Rafa Pikain Layola Yisraeli Regal. What happened was that originally the people had an excuse why they weren't going to visit the temple because there were these guards there and the guards didn't let them. Comes along a Shea Benela and he removed the guards. He removed the guards, then it was, it was there was no more excuse. And the people did not have any um, any uh, any zechus. When now, when they didn't go, now it was a big problem. Those those days that they didn't, those years that they didn't go to um, to visit the base of Migdash, now now they're going to be taken into captivity. So he took away the limit zechus from them. Yeah, isn't that interesting? That the removal of the um, of the excuse was actually harmful to the Jewish people. Yeah, it's a little surprising. Amr Rav Chizda Marukva, Rami Lam Rav Chizda Rav Yirmiya, Darish Maraymar. Rav Chizda says either the name of Marukva or Rav Chizda name of Rav Yirmiya. That Maraymar taught. My dixiv, Ayishkaid. Hashem alara b'yevel b'yevel lenu ki tzadik Hashem alenu that Hashem will quicken the evil will bring it upon us because Hashem is righteous to us. Hashem the tzadik Hashem alekeinu b'yishkad Hashem alara b'yevel lenu because Hashem is righteous to us that's why He's going to quicken the the punishment. El tzedaka asa kadosh baruch hu Yisrael shegla shehegla galus tzidki avadayin galus yichani kayam es tziv be galus yichani avacher shamasker elef. Says like this. What happened was the um, when the Jewish people were exiled to Babylonia, the the first um, exile was Yehania. <coughs> Together with him went all of the sages. And the second exile was eleven years later, but though, but the sages were still there. So it says that it was a righteousness. That Hashem did a kindness that Hashem did that He took us into the exile at the time when the sages were still there, not delay it, because um, otherwise they, the people would have been lost without the sages. They had no leadership. People left in Yerushal in Eretz Yisrael would have been lost. They were exiled much later, as we see when they came back seventy years later with Ezra with with Ezra. Uh, Ezra had to tell them to divorce their non-Jewish wives and uh, told, told them about uh, building a sukkah and Rosh Hashanah, all the things. They, they, they didn't have any, um, they're totally ignorant of, uh, of, of Judaism. It was like the, seven, like, the, like, the, like, the, like the 70 years of communism. It took away all um, education, so they're left with nothing. Yeah. So well, who went into exile? It says, Acharash. Hamasker, and the Gemara says Kharash. What is Kharash? The, the sages. These are the the descriptions of the sages that were exiled. That their uh, Kharash means like um, uh, deaf mute. It says when they would start speaking, everyone would become mute because no one would uh, no one would speak in front of them. And then Masker. What is Masker? That once they decided a rule, no one would uh, would ask any questions, would open up the discussion again. And how long, um, how many sages were exiled? It says, Ella, there were a thousand. A thousand sages were exiled in the first. And um, this was the kindness that Hashem did, that he took us into exile while they, while they were still there. Ula Amar, Ula says it was something else. Sheikhim Seishanim Le Veneshantim. Ula says that there's the Gematria of Veneshantim. Which is 852. Because that's the amount of years that the Jewish people were in the land of Israel. But Hashem took us out, exiled us two years earlier. And that was a great kindness because otherwise we would have been, uh, we would have been lost. The passage continues it says, Avoid Sevedon, you will surely be lost. So, in order to avoid the Vene Shantem being fulfilled, you'll be chased out and then you will be lost. In order to avoid that, Hashem took us out earlier, two years earlier, to avoid the, the continuation of the verse. Amr Ravach Bar Yaakov, Ravach Bar Yaakov says, Shema Mina, we learned from this, Mehira de Mari Alma, and Hashem says it's, it's going to be quick. How long is quick? 
Tamni Meya Vahamshin Vitai Yavi. It's 852 years. That's quick. As it says, You'll be you'll be destroyed quickly. Okay. So we have a new Mishnah. It says get ma'usa, uh, get that was forced on the husband. The husband was um, was forced to give the get. So uh, the Mishnah says the Israel, if it was forced by the Jewish people, I guess that means the court. So then um, the rule is that the get is kosher. Bagayim, but if the non-Jews forced him to give a get, then it's possible. Even by the non-Jews, if they were hitting him and they were telling him, that's for kasha. If, if they were telling him, do what the Jewish people are telling you to do, so then that would be kosher. I guess it sounds like if, um, if uh, the government would arrest people for not giving a get, so then uh, it sounds like it would be good if they were arresting them to, to fulfill the, um, the court. I think in Israel they actually arrest people. Yeah, I know some cases where the um, the husband refused to give a get, and then he like runs away to Israel, and um, and they catch him over there. They arrest him. They uh, yeah, until he gives a get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Amar of Nachman Amar Shmuel. Nachman says the name of Shmuel get hamusa be Israel kedin kosher. Like a din puzzle, puzzle of puzzle. Nachman says the name of Shmuel that a get that was forced, if it was forced by the Jewish court, and it was done according to the halacha. In other words, but what does it mean according to the halacha? That there was a reason, there was a, um, uh, the reason why he's divorcing her, the reason why uh, she's being divorced is because is, is for, um, she has a good claim, or there's a good reason why, why she should be divorced. What's it called uh, uh, in America? The certain states that you have to have a um, a reason for the divorce. You can't just divorce. You know what it's called? There's a there's a good cause. You have to have cause. There's cause for divorce. That's, that's, a, that's a phrase that's used, or sometimes you can do something without cause. Uh -huh. I don't know so if the, that's it. We need yeah, Gypsy. We so, need Gypsy here. Right, so bedin means that if there's cause for divorce, then it's kosher. Like a din, if there was no cause for divorce, and it was being forced by the Jewish court, but there was no cause for divorce, then pasal upaisal. So pasal means the gets pasal. Upaisal means, and she is now forbidden to marry a kayan. So even though the gets pasal, but she's still forbidden to marry a kayan. So she's really in a bad situation. Bagayim, let's say this was a non-Jewish court, then Kedin, if it was done with cause of for divorce, so then puzzle of Isil. Then the get is puzzle, but she's still forbidden from marrying a Kayan if the husband would die then. Um, because it's considered a reach get. So like Kedin, if there was no cause for divorce, I feel a reach get aim by then there's nothing going on. There's not there's not there's nothing there. Okay, so now um, let me see if I can help this guy. One second. Guys, they move tables around over here. Okay. If I, if I would turn the camera and show you what's going on, you see people sleeping on, on benches, you know, leftovers of the brain. Anyway, um, so the Gemara says, Manapta, what's going on? Either way, you take this. If the non Jews are able to force a get, so then it's kashuri nami lit kasha. Why don't we say that it's kosher? We should say that it's kosher. If they, they, they were doing it according to the, uh, with the cause of divorce, why isn't the get kosher? And if they can't cause it, if they can't force a divorce, nifsalayli puzzle. So why is the woman becoming puzzled to marry a kayan? Summer of Mashashi. Mashashi answers this question. The truth is really they can cause a divorce, they can force a divorce. Why they say that it's not a good divorce? 
We don't want women to run to non-Jews to, to hire a hitman, to force their husbands to give them a get. That's what we say, that the get's puzzled. We don't want this to, uh, to become a, you know, a, a, a habit, that, that women would do this. But really, the get would be a good get. And we, the rabbis just invalidated. The Gemara says, Yihachi, if that's the case, that means it's a good get. So like it didn't feel get aimed by. Why did you say that if it was done not a, without cause for divorce? You said that it's not even a reach get. There's not even, there's no problem with the fur marrying a client. Nebi Shleik didn't feel so. It should be exactly the way it was without a cause of divorce by a Jewish person. If it's exactly the same, a Jew can force a divorce, a non Jew can force a divorce. It should be the same. A mifsal nami lifsal, then she should be possible. With their rice, it's a good get. Why do you say that it's nothing? The Gemara answers, Elahadar Meshashi Badusi. Doesn't answer. The Gemara says, rejects from the Meshashi. It says this is where Meshashi has said that it's, uh, that it's mid a good divorce. That's Badusa. That's an absolute mistake. Yeah, that has to be removed from uh, uh, Badoi. Badoi means uh, it's false. This is uh, what Ramashashi said is false. The time of my. So, what is the actual reason why we make a distinction between if a Jew is forcing the divorce, if the Jewish court is for, or if the non Jews are forcing the divorce, forcing him to give the get? It says, Kadin, the Kadin, the Yisrael Michla. Really, a non Jewish uh, divorce is nothing. But if it's done with cause for divorce, so then we're going to think that. When the non-Jew forces it, it's going to be nothing. When a Jew forces it, it's also nothing. And that's going to be a problem if it's done with cause for divorce. So like it in, if it's done without cause for divorce, so like it in, like it in, Yisrael, like Michla. But we're not concerned that with, without cause by a non-Jew, that's going to be mixed up with cause by a Jew. And we're going to say that, that it's, that, in, in other words, we don't have to be concerned about the not- no cause for divorce by an Anju, and we say it's really nothing because it really is nothing anyway. If we're just concerned that maybe you're going to think that if it's really nothing, then what about if it's uh, by uh, if it's being forced by a Jew? So when it comes to the Jew, the Jewish um, by a Jew, when there's cause for divorce, where it is a good get. So we also say by a non-Jew that she's considered a uh, she's considered puzzle. But when there's no cause for divorce, we say that it's not. Because even by the uh, even by a Jew, it's considered puzzle anyway. Okay. Abaya Ashkechila Rav Yosef, the Yosef Kamasia Git. Abaya sees Rav Yosef that he's forcing someone to give a get. It doesn't give us exactly what he's doing, but um, he probably has a stick. Or uh, he's sending someone with a stick to hit the guy to give a get. Amalei says, Vanan had yaitis anan. We're not a real best, and we can't force someone to give a get. Tanya, it was sudden a brisa here of Tafan. I'm a comak and Katamaitsi, a Goreim till Goyim. Afapisha the name to Dini Israel, yet there's a Lizaki clan. If you see a Goreim shall Goyim means uh, gatherings of non Jews. You see gatherings of non-Jews, even though they're going to make a referring to non-Jewish courts, even if they're going to pass in exactly the way a Jewish court would pass in, you you're not supposed to turn to them. These are the laws that you should place before them, and which means you shouldn't go in front of a non-Jewish courts. And another davarach, another interpretation of lefneim before them. You shouldn't go to to courts that are that are not that don't have smicha. And therefore, Abai is asking Rabbi Yosef that since we're in Babel, we don't have smicha. So how are you? How are you um, uh, acting as if you're a bezdin and you're forcing someone to give a get? Amalei. So he responded, We're doing the message, the the mission of the earlier bezdin. Or the best in Avaret Yisrael that um, that uh, we're like their uh, their agents. Okay, you see, we have a court for um, for uh, loans and uh, and admissions and those things. But we do collect money. So the Gemara says, Why don't you make a court also to take fines 
for double double payment and uh, and um, and also to, to to take fines when someone gets hurt because someone get, uh, injures another person. When do we do the mission? When are we messengers? Of the real court, the most of the shricha, that's only for common things. The most of the lay shricha lay of the inspisasayo, things that aren't common, we're not considered messengers for them. This is the famous Nasibis in uh, Simon Gimel, you know, in the beginning of Pesha Mishnah. In, in, in where? In Simon Gimel, in the, in, uh, in the beginning of Pesha Mishnah. This, this is a yeah, big yeah. thing about Geras and stuff. I, I read recently the Kassam Sofer challenged this whole way of, uh, line of thinking. Uh -huh. For the simple reason, how can someone become a shliach of someone who's dead? Uh -huh. He's not really appointed, it's just a fiction, and he has right. a big shuv about it. I started to read it, I haven't gotten through it yet. Well, well, well the question is, is, is good. And the Gemara states it like a, you know, like it's a general sort of shliacha, without like being appointed specifically. Yeah. yeah. This is a famous, okay. very famous passage. Of what? This very, the whole Shriku Seho Kameho. It's all the subject of the basis for um, rabbis oh, today. The, the basis for rabbis today to have authority. Right. 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 It's really just messengers of the earlier, uh, yeah. of the earlier testament. You know, it only applies to certain things. That was that's the, uh, the Nasibis over there mentions Geras. Uh, like, how are we doing Geras? Okay. Yatsashma Be'ir Mekudashas. Let's say there's a rumor that this woman is married, is betrothed. Arisa Mekudashas. So we consider her married. Megurashas. There's a rumor that she's divorced. Arisa Megurashas. We say she's divorced. And therefore, she can't marry a Kayan. As long as there's no um, excuse or a um, explanation for why we're saying this. Because if there is an explanation, then she could get out of it. What would be an explanation? She's saying that she's really, she's divorced and we're going to make her separate from her husband or something um, that she's living with. But it turns out that the excuse is, or the explanation is, is that there was a condition in that divorce. It wasn't a real divorce. Zarek Kiddushar, when the, the rumor about she's that she's betrothed, we say, Safikar of Allah, Safikar of life, that she's not really betrothed because there's, uh, we're not sure where it, um, how, how uh, where the Kiddushan landed. Okay. Julia Masa, that would be considered an explanation or an excuse for the rumor. Umar says that if she's, um, if there's a rumor that she is divorced, so we say that she can't live with her husband. That's what it looks like. The Gemara doesn't really say, the Mishnah doesn't really say that. The Mishnah says, but we consider her divorced. Just one second. We're going to make her forbidden to her husband. Ravashi says that we never suspect to rumors that after a woman's married. You need, we need real substantial, uh, you know, um, Proof, witnesses, not just rumors. The Gemara says, "Achi Kamar." Yatsa Shema Be'ir Mekudesha, Sarizim Mekudesha. If there's a, a single girl, that there's a rumor that goes around, goes out that says that she is betrothed. We say, "Okay, she's a single girl." Now we uh, we have to assume that maybe she's uh, betrothed. Sarizim Mekudesha, Mekudesha, so Migurasha. Let's say the rumor said that she was betrothed and divorced. Not that she was a married woman that we knew that she was married. And now there's a rumor that she's divorced and we say she can't be with us. No, we didn't, she wasn't married. We didn't know that she was married. There's a rumor that she was married and divorced. So then what's, what happens? In the news, huh? Now we're going to consider a divorce, which means basically she's back to her original status. My timer, what's the reason? You have the, the rumor together with its receipt. So we, uh, we will say that she's permissible to get married. I don't know about a Kayan, the major uh, problem. Any comments over there in your Gemaras? What about that she can marry a Kayan? 
Rashi says she's mutter to everyone. It means we're not really suspecting the, the rumor at all. Okay, my time, I'm a, I'm a Rava, yes, what shame is on a beer. Rava says, let's say, rumor goes out that a, a single girl is um, uh, promiscuous. She's having relations all over, you know, with uh, non Jews, slaves, things that would make her um, fossil to a uh, Kayan. Well, in Cheshama, we don't say that she's fossil to the Kayan. My timer. What's the reason? When they said that she's having relations, they, re- they didn't really see that she was having relations. They just saw that she was, uh, you know, I- immodest and Im- impro- improper conduct. It doesn't mean that she was really having relations. No, but Corin says that she's prohibited from marrying a Cohen. Oh, she's prohibited to marry a Cohen. Okay. Yeah, that, w- that makes sense. Yeah, so Rashi that says Muteris Lakal must mean Muteris to everyone that's not a Kohen. Okay. Kitanoi, this statement of Rava that says that we're not concerned about a woman that has, uh, that there's rumors about her, um, this actually matches Machlekes Tanoim, and it's going to only fit with one of the Tanoim. There's Achla Bashuk, Yergara Bashuk, Mika Bashuk. If there's a woman that eats in the marketplace, or she walks with her neck outstretched up in the marketplace, it's like immodest, or she nurses her child in the marketplace. So, all of these, uh, uh, all of these women, Ramea says that they get divorced from the husband, that's a Kayan. Concerned that maybe they had relations. Maybe she was, uh, she had adultery. Rabbi Akiva, Aimer, Mish Yisav Yitnam of Mazar's Palavana. No, that's not enough. It has to be that the people that do uh, weaving, knitting, crocheting, that they're already um, talking about it. Once they're talking about it, then that's considered a substantial rumor, something that we should be concerned about. Amra Amalai Rabbi Yechen Manuri. Rabbi Yechen Manuri says, Im Kain, that's the case that you're going to make people get divorced like that. Uh, uh, there's going to be no daughters of Avram Avinu that are going to be together with their husbands. What happened to the whole two witnesses thing? You need two witnesses. You can't just uh, rely on rumors. Yeah. It sounds like it's not, it doesn't have to be a Kayan. Any woman, hey, this, uh, the Gemara is discussing any woman. Any woman should, would be forbidden to her husband, according to uh, Rabbi Akiva. Um, just with these rumors. Okay. So what we're saying here is that Rabbi Yechanan Benuri, Rabbi would be following the view of Rabbi Yechanan Benuri, but we don't rely on, uh, on rumors. Okay. Then Rabbanu was taught in a brayse Ba'ula. Let's say the rumor goes out that she's a Ba'ula, that she's not a virgin anymore. So, in um, that's not a concern. She can still marry a Kain Gadol. Why are people saying that? They saw that she uh, was uh, misbehaving one way or another, but uh, not that she was really a uh, that she really had relations. Nesua, if there's a rumor that she was uh, that she was married. Um, we didn't think that she was married. In we're not, we don't have to be concerned about the rumor. Arusa, that she's betrothed. In we're not concerned about that either. So, Loy um, there's a, there's a rumor that she's betrothed, but we don't have uh, the name to who. In we're not concerned about that. I don't know why that, that's a concern, even if she, oh. Um, Arusa in Cheshima. What happens if there is a name? (laughs) 
okay, I guess what's, what's going on, there's a difference here between um, by Arusa, we said that she's betrothed, we're not concerned about that. That's when we're saying that she was betrothed in the past. And we never heard that she was betrothed. So we say we're not concerned about that. But now we're saying that she got betrothed today, but we don't have the name. So that in Allah, or Be'ir Acheres. If we have a rumor that she got uh, betrothed today in a different city, in Allah, we're not concerned about that either. Mamzeres. There's a rumor that she's a mamza. In Allah, we're not concerned. Shifcha. That she's a slave girl. In Allah. Pick this point in the chasav. There's a, a rumor that someone so uh, made all his uh, possessions kaidish, hektish. If you're playing in the chasav, or there's a rumor that so and so made uh, every, all his possessions ownerless in Christian land, we're not concerned about those rumors. Amar Ula, Ula says, Leisha Shamu Kalavara. I'm not talking about that we heard an echo. That's like, I think that's an expression of a rumor without any spaces. Ella, Kadeshi and Neris Dolkois, Mitis Mitsois, Mnadam Nafas of the Eitzram, Plainis, Kadesh Zayim. That would be considered a rumor. When do we say that there's a, a real rumor? That's when um, there's candles that are burning, the beds are made, and beds are made probably means that the seats are, are set up for like a wedding. And people are going in and out, and they're saying that so and so is getting married today. What says Miss Kadesh? She's getting married, she's getting betrothed. That's not, that's not a, even a, a rumor because she, they didn't say that she got married, they said she's getting married. And getting married doesn't do it. Is nothing. I mean, getting married, uh, people back out of that doesn't mean that they, she's actually married. Aim a plainness niskad shayim. No, the rumor was after that, all you know, the hall is uh, prepared and all of that, and the people are saying that so and so is uh, was married today or got married. Chayin Tanel Levi. Levi also said leishes she just mukalavara. Not that there was an echo or uh, some just uh, uh, something without any source. Now the candles were burning and the uh, the beds were the, the the chairs were set up. The women are are weaving to the light of candles and they're re rejoicing. That means they're setting up the hall or something. Yeah, and they say that so and so is getting betrothed today. Miskadeshes. The Gemara asks the challenges right away. She's getting betrothed. That she got the trust today. The same story. Not that it was a uh, an echo. And together with all of that, with the whole setup, they had to have said something. That would be a rumor. But if they didn't say anything, then that would be an excuse. That means an explanation for. Um, that that uh, the rumor is not valid. But Gomer says, Layamru, if they didn't say anything, then why do you need an excuse? No one said anything. It's coming to exclude what Rabbi Barafuna said, that when they gave an excuse, that you can give an excuse up to 10 days. It's only if they said it. Only if they gave the excuse right away would it be considered a master. Uh, Amru, one second. Let's see what this means. Kamash Malan. Yechanan is saying that the Amasla doesn't break the rumor only if it came together with the rumor. Oh, so Loyamru means that they didn't have a full rumor, they had an Amasla, they had the excuse or the explanation together with it, then that would be a, a good, a, a good uh, explanation. Amru, but if they did have a full rumor and then you wanted later on to explain that, then that's not a good explanation. Amr Rabab, Amr Rabab. Rabab says the name of Rabuna. 
in the name of Rav. It's not that they heard a uh, an echo and that's what the rumor started. You have to actually say, where did the so-and-so hear it from? He heard it from so-and-so. And then they trace, they have to trace it back to get to the source of it. That would be a rumor. They have to come back until they get a, a real source of someone that says that I was there and I saw it. Rumor says, Dover Barter, hey, this mal I see. But the, you, now you tell you, that's not a rumor, that's witnesses. Elok, yes, Rab Shmuel Bar Yehuda, Rab Abba, Rab Huna, Rab. Rab Shmuel Bar Yehuda came and he said in the name of Rab Abba, in the name of Rab Huna, name of Rab. Rather, it goes like this. Where did so and so hear it from? Me plainly, heard it from so and so. Plainly, me plainly, and so and so heard it from so and so. But they're not here. So we trace it back to actual names, but they all they went on a trip and they're not available. So we don't have actually have witnesses. That would be considered a rumor. Amalia Bailer of Yosef. Yeah, go a little further. Abaya says to Rav Yosef, If there is a rumor, does the Besdin step in and say that it's not true? Or not? Since Rav Chizda says that a rumor has to be heard from kosher people, and they went overseas, uh, so if the Besdin finds out that the rumor is not, 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 not accurate, then we see that they, the best thing would step in and say that she's not married, she's not uh, betrothed, or all of these things. They would step in and break the rumor. On the contrary, since Rav Shesha says that even women can create the rumor, we see that, the, that, the, that we're actually strict about this. And we go, we're, we say that even if, uh, if the women said this, that it would be uh, that it's a rumor. That's the one step in. A Malay. As as Ninu. There's different places. The Surah Mavati Kal. Depends on the location. In Surah, they break the rumor, the best thing. In Ada Lay Mavati Kala. In Aida, they don't break the rumor. They just leave it. Ahu the Nafikala Kala de Kachala Barbe Rav. It was Ahi. It was a girl that the rumor went out that she married one of the yeshiva students. Asi Rav Chama Lavua. Rav Chama went to her father. Amale, he said to him, Emile Echav Yovda, tell me what happened. Amale Al Tanai Kaddish. He married her on condition that he doesn't go to Bechuzai and Vazal, and he went, so they're not really married because there was a condition there. Amale, even the Be'idna, the Habikola, Le'avi Amasna. Since at the time of the of the rumor, we didn't have the the excuse, the explanation together with it, so now we can't ex- accept the explanation. What is Bay Kuzay? What is Bay Kuzay? Yeah. Okay. Um, he did not call it. Yeah, we did. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, and therefore, this woman won't be able to get married to someone else without a get. Says that he did not call it the Ikatsha Batsipa de Tukhla. There was a rumor that this, that this woman got married by um, getting uh, the husband gave her. Um, hits from a date. Date pits. Now, on the date pit, there's a, still a little bit of date left. You have to, uh, um, to bite it off. Bidna de Beishati. Beina de Beishati. This is at the, um, at, the, at, the, at the spring of Beishati. Sholcha Rav Idi Bar Oven. The Kamei Dabaya. He the Barvin sends to Abaya. Kia Gavnamai. What's going to be the din? Amale. I feel him. And Amale. Matlin Kala. Abaya says, even according to the one that says, if you don't know, if we don't um, uh, take away a rumor. Bahav Mevatlin Kala. But here we do take away the rumor. Why? Neymar Amri. 
people say, the sages looked at the um, They know everyone's going to understand that the sages looked into the marriage and they said that uh, there wasn't enough dates on the uh, on the pits that it should be considered shavu pruta. There was a rumor about a girl that she was betrothed from uh, the, the from such and such a family. The man was from such and such a family, but we don't know which one. One of the sons of so and so. Amarava, Philamanda, Amalema Vatsin Kala, even uh, according to the opinion, according to those that say that we don't annul a rumor, but over here, Baha, Mavatsin and Kala, here we do annul the rumor and we will allow her to get married. Why? Maymar Amri, because everyone will say that Ainabur Rabban Bekidushe, the sages looked into the marriage and, and it was Kidushi Katanabu, that the child, that the one, this son that married her was a child and it's not a good condition. He did not like color the catch there was a rumor that someone got married. And uh, who was this? This was the Katan Hanira Kagadal. It was married to this man that was a, a youngster, he was a minor, but he looked very big. Uh, there was such a story that came to the sages. He still didn't, he didn't reach the divisions of Ruven. So the divisions of Ruven are the, the great people that are, are great or adults that have wisdom. Then, in other words, even though he looks like he's older, but that doesn't matter. He's still considered a child. Okay. Um, what do you have a comment over there, Paldus Rubin? Do you have any notes on that? The divisions of Rubin? Um, I, it says over here in the Quran that, in other words, his actions indicate that he is a minor who has not reached the competence of adulthood. Therefore, the woman may marry. He does not need a divorce from him. Now, Rashi says other. But what what is what why is how did Ruvain come here? What is Ruvain now? Uh, uh, it's Rabbeinu Hananel has a version of the text that reads, "We have not reached the divisions of Ruvain." In other words, we do not have the acuteness of the sage who were able to discern whether a boy who looked and acts like an adult would be determined as having reached. Rather, we follow the Allah well, that defines majority based on puberty and age. I'm sorry. We're all bane. Uh -huh. Does it mean it's a boy or as opposed to ruling? Oh, you think so? I don't know. I'm just asking. Because the child is, is it a, is it a bane like a kid or is it? Oh. Okay, I don't know. Okay, let's stop over here. Okay, Thank you. Come tomorrow, we'll try to finish the, um, uh, at least we'll get close to the end and then we'll leave it for our CM. I do, we didn't, um, we didn't When's decide. When's the CM? CM, I don't know. But whatever the case is, Tuesday we'll start the uh, we'll start the uh, condition. All right, Tuesday I, I hope to be back. We'll do that in person. I'm sorry. When do you want to do this? Well, if you do this to you on Thursday, I'll be there. Oh, on Thursday? Oh, yeah. So maybe if, we if it's on Thursday, I'll be there. <laughs> okay. We, we, Thursday night, we would do it. Is that, is that yeah? Well, I come back Wednesday night, yeah, late midnight. Okay, let's uh, we'll talk to Ellie and uh, Yitzi, I think, is away, but okay, okay, yeah, Shikaya. Shikaya. okay. thank you. Have a wonderful day, thank you.